um, and this is a quote, uh, Buber says, the world has no part in experience, right? The world has, it plays no part in experience. It permits itself to be experienced, right? So, um, it's not that the world as sort of inanimate, mundane stuff is there engaged in sort of internalizing experience. It's just always perpetually sort of emitting, right? Emitting the conditions to be, to be sort of Kantian in the sense, the conditions for the possibility of experience, right? Phenomenal experience. It is there to be perceived, right? It is, right? Um, that, that language is always fun. I always like that language, right? It is, it's, it's, you know, other philosophers call it throne. Other philosophers call it given. No matter what you want to call it, the throne, the given, the it, existence, the being, is there to be had, right? It's there to be perceived. Um, in that sense, I, it, there, it, you know, I don't want to go too far off broad, and I shouldn't mix and match philosophers, but I just thought of it that um, there's a, a, a component of Rand that is, that, that is congruous with this aspect, at least the I-it relation of Buber, right? So they aren't as drastically different as I maybe initially thought, right? Uh, she's definitely not going to be uh, subscribing to the I-thou relation. Okay. So we can understand then, um, so we understand sort of the relational experience between the I-it. The next is the relational experience between the I-thou. Um, and he creates, he describes three spheres in the world of relation to the thou. So the first sphere within the thou, so this is within the thou, right? Within my relational experience with the thou, there is um, my relation, our relational experience to nature, our relational experience to other people, men, and then finally our relational experience to spiritual So our relational experience between uh, to nature, to men, and to spiritual beings. Remember, just earlier, only maybe a paragraph or two later, about before previously, Buber said that in describing um, the thou, unlike describing the it, where it's understood in terms of something, the thou is understood in terms of no thing, nothing. The question is, how in the world could you both say that it's understood in terms of no thing, and also say that the, the, the spheres of relation are composed of nature, men, and spiritual beings. Seems like this is something. Um, I'll make sense of this in, in a second, because you'll, you'll see what this is, and really and truly all that these are are uh, uh, instantiations, but I don't want to jump the gun. I'll, I'll uh, address that in a second. So, for Buber, when we're, and I'll raise some of this now. So, um, for Buber, when we're talking about, actually I want to start from this end, because I can sort of kill two birds with one stone in this, uh, in this. Okay, so, for Buber, when we're talking about spiritual beings, for him, all, all of this is going to be understood, understood in terms of speech. Right? The spiritual beings, our relational experience with spiritual beings as thou, is, he doesn't say this, but this is what he means, the, he says begets, right, he uses the words begets, but it basically means the, the condition for, if I can write, the possibility of speech, right, so he says begets, but it basically means the conditions for the possibility of speech. Our relational experience with spiritual beings, for Buber, is the condition for the possibility of speech. It's devoid of speech. It's, there is no speech, but it is the condition in which speech arises. Our relational experience uh, with men is defined by speech. Right? It's defined by speech. Right? And uh, to sort of like um, cross-reference another uh, philosopher here, this would, you know, you could you could uh, use Wittgenstein's sort of caveat about um, the impossibility of private language here, right? Even if you're not speaking language, you're speaking through symbols, through the use of symbols, right? 
and that's completely fine with Boober. That that would accord with his account because our relational our relational experience with other men is defined by speech. And then our relational experience with nature, he says, I forget how he puts it, he says it's like, uh, it's like falling, or I forget the word, he, uh, it's going to drive me crazy. He says our relational experience, uh, he, he says uh, the relations sway in gloom beneath the level of speech, beneath the level of speech. It's ineffable. I don't make sure I spell it right. I am, did I put this down here? I am the F -F I don't know how to spell ineffable. I B L E, I think. Probably spelled that wrong, but it's ineffable, right? So, the condition for the possibility of speech, speech starts here, speech is, is used here, speech is lost here, speech is initiated here, begins here, but it's not used. Speech is used here, speech is lost here, right? And this is a relational experience between, um, this relational experience defines my relation, my, the totality of my relational experience between the I, thou. Right, so for the individual, right, and if we're talking about the thou, then there's like this trifecta, right? Right, it's like my relational experience with nature, my relational experience with uh, men, my relational experience with uh, spiritual beings, right? So it's the three of these comprise my relational experience. Remember, all of them, just like before. Um, the I is equal to existence, right? It's inseparable from a discourse on of existence. But what we'll see now, um, as we saw before, three is the condition for the possibility of speech. Two is my use of speech. One, my relational experience with nature is a loss of speech, right? You don't go up to a tree and start talking and having conversations with, with, with trees. It just, <laughs> I mean, maybe you do, maybe you do. And I'm not trying to trivialize what, what Buber is saying, because that's not quite what he's saying, so scratch that. <laughs> All right, um, there are uh, three, then, and just to articulate this, my relational, um, my relation to nature is a relation to the Tao, right? My relation to nature is a relation to the Tao. My relation to people is a relation to the Tao. My relation to spiritual beings is a relation to the Tao. All three of these are in a firm um, existence as such, right? 